Hey, it's been a while. This might be a little bit different of a video than uh, I've been posting lately on here. A lot of the stuff I've been doing lately is a lot of camping, but I wanna start making some other types of videos, more talking about what I do for work and some of the video production stuff I do, some of the pros and cons or struggles and things I'm dealing with or whatever with video production. And as you can see by the title of this video, today the thing I wanna talk about is shooting sports. A little while back, about a week or two ago, but I don't wanna date this video, well, so we'll go with a week or two ago. I used a connection for someone I know to shoot for an OHL team in my area called the Niagara Ice Dogs. I asked them if they had, first of all, anyone that shot video for them, and the answer was no, not anymore. And second was if I was allowed to or if that's something they would be interested in. And sure enough, I asked him and he was more than excited to do so. I first of all have, had watched a couple videos of other people that shot sports, something like football, which I know is a bit different, but thought there could be some good tips for helping me to go into shooting something like this that I've never really done anything quite like it. So this was definitely something new. I kind of knew what to do and what type of style I would need to do, but there was just things that I knew I would be learning on the fly. So how I'm breaking this down is some pros and things I learned and stuff I have to work on for next time, as well as things that I thought of or knew going in that actually really helped or things I did really well. So I have some of them written down here on this little page, but I'm gonna talk about some of these. So. The first thing, which can be a little tough, it's using autofocus. So especially with hockey, with a lot of players, you know, someone skates by and you're, you can't set your autofocus too sensitive so that the second someone skates in front of someone with the puck, it shifts away from them and then goes back. So I find that I use a button on the back to switch from autofocus to manual focus. And I find Switching between that and center focus as well as wide area focus, switching in between that is some of the, the best things to use. And I find switching back and forth, sometimes manual focus, there's no real sweet spot for any of it. And have the speed of the autofocus pretty quick, but the sensitivity of it fairly low. You want it to be able to find a face or a subject and stick to it, but not focus away the second someone goes out in front. Con or thing I learned the hard way number two is following the action is quite tough. So if you aren't a sports person or haven't played the sport long enough that you're going to shoot, I would suggest either watching a lot of games and pretending of where you're gonna point the camera and try and guess where the ball or the puck is gonna go, especially in my case. I know hockey very well, I've been playing it all my life. And I struggled even then with trying to get a, a full body shot with my 70 to 200 of the action because someone might fake a pass and I'm switching across or zooming across and the action's gone. So they faked it, they went the other way, and then I'm trying to find it, and you know, I might have missed a cool deke or something. It can be very tough, but that's just something I learned, and after a couple minutes or a period or two, it started to feel better, but it still was just something I observed, especially shooting from ice level. Up high is not so bad. Which brings me into the, my third point, which is I wrote here, low is cool, high is practical. And what I mean by that is, the low angle is where you get really close, tight shots into everything, but that's especially in the hockey case where you get the glass blocking stuff, the stangents, the things in between the panes of glass in the way, as well as a lot of players skating in front, the ref. In the third period of this game that I shot, every time the puck went into one end, the ref happened to stand right in front of where I wanted to shoot. So those are the kind of things that I could have been so prepared and that happened because that's where that ref stands. Whereas when I shot up in the stands, as you can see by these shots, that it's more the typical broadcast angle, but 
I actually really like some of the action that I caught with it. You can really see everything, especially, you know, the saves that the goalie makes and stuff like that. I find the, the up high is really practical, although that's when you get into getting the net in the way at the ends of the rinks. So all in all, I like a mix of both, but just know that shooting low is cooler, but it is a bit harder, I found. The fourth thing that was a shocker to me or a harsh reality check was, I guess I kind of thought of it beforehand, but getting into the edit after is a nightmare. <laughs> no beating around the bush. The, the sheer volume of footage that you kind of have to shoot with a sport like this because you can't really miss anything. You're kind of rolling for a whole play just in case someone gets hit. Um, it's a lot of footage to go through and it kind of helps where if you edit, you know, the next morning or start cutting selects the night of just because it's fresh in your mind and you know when you're watching a play like, oh yeah, this was roughly in the first period and I know goals coming soon. But if you leave it a couple days or something, you're going to start forgetting what actually happened, you know, when you were sitting there. And it's going to be a little bit more tedious to, to go and watch through. But I find with my sh keyboard shortcuts that I have that I sit with one hand and just have like cutting and like to play through it twice the speed. Um, so you see the, the players zooming around, but you can, if you, you watch with a keen eye, you can tell when something interesting happened that you might want to pull for the final video. The last thing I wrote down here for what I learned was sometimes it's not that easy to get the fans interaction, like getting kids, especially at these games, all hyped up, you know, the mascot going and interacting with people or scoring goals because you want to get the action of the player scoring the goal. But then I found you can see in this raw clip where I go from the players on the ice and I whip handheld as fast as I could into the crowd to try and get some reactions because I knew it wasn't going to be that exciting of a game. And you really want the fans interaction in this because anybody can shoot the sports, but it's all about the fans watching and the atmosphere in there. And I would just keep a keen eye on fans and you know, the people that you might see on the, on the big screen, like dancing and stuff, make sure you are head on a swivel to get any of that stuff anytime at all possible. Some things that I did well in this that I found pretty happy with was not using a gimbal at all. So I kind of thought going into this video that I wanted to make it, you know, fast, handheld, hype, you know, getting a lot of movement, speed ramps in there. So I shot basically everything at 60 frames a second, not 120 because I wanted to play most of it normal speed and only small little slow motion dips. So I'm happy that I chose that way, as well as I'm very glad that I shot handheld. I know one person on the video that we posted commented that it was too shaky, but I personally think the handheld made it. And I think it would have been more of a boring video if I didn't do it that way or I made it more stable. So don't be afraid to get some movement in there so that if you have to move fast to get the action that it, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb and it fits right in and gets more of that gritty feel to the video. Another thing I'm really happy that I did is shoot with two different lenses. So I brought two with me and I kept one in my bag at all times on my little pouch. I got a good mix of using my 24 to 70 from Sigma, getting you know closer things in the hall with the players, um, some more wide shots of the action on the ice, as well as then switching to my 70 to 200 to really get some of those tighter shots, action shots, some crowds, some not seeing them, not seeing me, sorry, with shooting them from somewhere in the crowd. I found it really helpful to, to get some nice tight shots with that, as well as how much I used each. When I came to editing, I didn't feel like I at any point was like, oh, I wish I had more wide shots or oh, I wish I had more tight action shots. I think I had a good split of, of each 
kind of focal length to mix and use in the final edit, which I'm, I'm very happy about. And I think the last thing that I'm really happy I did well is actually two maybe. Incorporate some of the ambient noise, you know, the goal horn. I asked uh, the people from the team if I could use, you know, the intro that you would hear, the first shot, you know, welcome to the game tonight between the Ice Dogs and the Owen Sound Attack. From the Meridian Center in downtown St. Catharines, it's the OHL tonight. From the Meridian Center in downtown St. Catharines, it's the OHL tonight. I like how I incorporated some of the natural sounds and people cheering and the clapping and stuff like that into the final video. And then lastly, the thing I like to touch on is the amount of different angles that I got. So I was basically on the move the whole night except for the final period. So the first period I stayed kind of more at the glass and got some of those low shots where I got the first goal, a little scrum behind the net right in front of me, which I got a real good angle of. And then the second period I kind of went up above, like at the top of the first like 100 level to kind of get more of the broadcast angle, the looking down, but I was able to get everything from the side. And I didn't go to the end too much because the netting came into play. So that's something to take into account, but that was fine with me. And then the last period, I luckily got in with the photographer in between the benches. They don't have any camera slots in the corners to shoot through. So what we're limited to at this arena is this little booth in between the benches that you go into before the players get to the bench and then you leave after the game. Now I can say something I wasn't expecting was first of all to get in there and second of all was how scary it is because I know with hockey, no helmet or anything, the second you see a defenseman go to fire one up the ice, I flinch back a little bit a couple times. Quite scary, but it worked out fine. Um, that was the angle which was probably the most frustrating because in the middle of the ice you have line changes right in front of you it's it's wild chaos in front of you but i'm very happy i used i think a couple shots in there from um in between the benches but yeah in the end i'm glad with the variety that i got and i will keep in mind to do that for the next time as well from the Meridian Center in downtown St. Catharines, it's the OHL tonight on your TV. Good evening, everyone. I'm Al Galloway, along with Steve Clark and Burke Holder, and our entire Your TV team. Glad to have you on board for the Owen Sound Attack and the Niagara Ice Dogs. The trade deadline has come and gone, and the unofficial second half of the season has begun. <laughs> Able to clear, Van Etten kept it, a tip by Colton, they score! So that was kind of the main things I learned from shooting sports for the first time, specifically hockey. Hopefully you watching can take something away from it or something to learn for the next time you go out. And if you want another video or some other tips about how I made this video and some of the, the things that the settings I used and stuff like that, comment below and I'm willing to make something like that go more in depth with kind of the technical aspect. This was just more of an overview for the day itself, 
the, the evening. Um, yeah, let me know. And in the meantime, I'm going to try shooting another game. And you'll probably see another upload on this channel for um, that game this Saturday. So, yeah, stay tuned. Subscribe, like the video. Hope it helped out, and I'll see you soon. Always slow.